uh, Algebra 1 and uh, 5 3 worksheet. Um, now, today there's a few little things. Um, we're going to learn how to graph the inequalities, but that's really easy. We're also going to learn how to write the interval notation, which is super easy also. All of this is super easy, but we're going to take two days. The reason why we're taking two days in this lesson and two days in the next lesson is because there's just a lot of information. And some of you guys are almost great at solving equations, but you're still not quite there. So this is a really good review of that. All right? And again, I mean what I'm saying. Speak up. All right, don't wait till I get on question nine before you say, man, I'm clueless. Don't do that. Immediately. All right? And I'm saying it's easy. It's easy, it's easy, it's easy. And some of you have told me you get annoyed when I say it's easy because it's hard for you. All right? But that's part of the battle. That's part of the fight. All right? Everything's not easy. All right? It can be easy with proper practice. All right? And asking me questions. Because I told some of you specifically, you're not a B student. You're not a C student. All right, you're A student. All right, if you want to. And some of you just making a choice. You just don't want to. All right, that's okay too. All right? But I want you to be an A. All right? So over here, same principles apply. All right, same principles apply. You're solving it just like an equation. So what do I have to do first? Go ahead. What do I do first, guys? Add three. Perfect. Whoever said that, you add three. So here we go. I have three fourths t equals, not equals, but is greater than or equal to negative 12. Anybody have an issue with that? You just added three to both sides, right? I thought you make it equal to. Oh, wait, now you're cheating. Come on, come on. And again, listen, I'm just adding three. Now, listen, I, I don't I don't bless you, but here's here's something else that some of you, and I don't mind this, but I just don't think it's necessary. If you need to put plus three and plus three, go ahead. There's no shame in that. That means you're getting it right. You still are training your brain, which is perfectly fine. Now we've talked about this a bunch. How do I get rid of the fraction? Multiply, Multiply by the reciprocal. So everybody's gonna put a four over three, and everybody's gonna put a four over three. All right, and now t is greater than or equal to, what's 12 divided by three? Four times four, 16, and don't forget it's negative 16. So that's the answer, all right? Now we have two more answers that we're gonna give, all right? We're going to graph it, all right? Which, when you get to higher level, we don't really graph anymore, all right? But let me explain to you what that is, and you're just going to graph a couple of them. I always tell kids to put the answer and the opposite. I don't want zero. I just want the answer and the opposite. Now, greater than or equal to, do you include negative 16? Yes. So that means it's a solid dot at negative 16. Greater than means everything which direction? To the right. So here's how I do it. I make an arrow up and over because I don't want to scratch on the number line. All right? That's the answer graphically. Now, again, I don't like to do that because to me that's a waste of time. But I'm showing you because on every standardized test, they do a number line and they show you the graph. So you have to know what that is. All right? Now, the next advanced technique that you'll do in all of your in all of your math classes, let's say in algebra two and above, they do interval notation. <clears throat> they don't do a number line. So the interval notation. Now all I'm asking you before you say how did you do that and why did you do that is let's just watch what I do and see if it makes sense. All right. This is a bracket starting at negative sixteen, and we are going to infinity. That's called interval notation. So the bracket means to include negative 16. Comma, the sideways 8 is an infinity sign, which just means it goes on forever. Now, why isn't there a bracket at infinity? Because technically, you can't reach what? Infinity. You can't reach infinity. All right, is everybody with me on that? All right. Now, let's just say, for example, it was t is greater than negative 16. 
All right. So if the answer was t is greater than negative 16, let me ask you this question. Is there a first number greater than negative 16? And the answer is obviously, is negative 15 the first number greater than negative 16? No. No. There's this number right here. There's this number right here. There is no first number greater than negative 16, right? Because we could be what? Negative 15.9, negative 15.99, negative 15.9999. Everybody see what I'm saying? There is no first number greater than negative 16. That's why when you're graphing something that's just greater than or less than, that's why you do what's referred to as an open circle. Because it's everything greater than negative 16, but not included. And then you do what? You go up and over. That would be it. All right. So interval notation now would be, instead of a bracket, we use a parenthesis. So then it would be negative 16, comma, infinity. That would be the answer for interval notation. Quickly. Okay, so back to the negative 16 and infinity, uh, why did you do one bracket? Okay, because bracket is for equal. Oh. That's the difference. That's all there is to it. Make yourself a note quickly. Um, for the for the equation where it's in for where it's t and then for sine it's next to t. What is that? Greater than or equal to. Well, why is there like a line? Yeah, wait. What's the difference? So this right here means greater than or equal to. Right? So this is greater than, this is equal to. So sometimes you can be greater than or equal to. So instead of doing this, because mathematicians are lazy, they just do this. That's all that means. Good question. Well, because this right here, listen, this is the symbol, all right? So because some of you are a little confused, if I do this, or I do this, there's going to be a bracket on both of those, right? If it's this or this, it's going to be parentheses. You with me? Yes, good. Like this? You don't understand that? Okay, so if I'm greater than negative 16, that means I'm going to the right. If I'm less than, I'm going where? To the left. All right, yes, sir. Well, the, it says it could be greater than or equal to. So, like, if they're equal, then. Then it's a solid dot. Well, that one is going to the right. Uh -huh. so it's a solid okay, so listen. In math, you have options. Right? So, they're telling you the answer could be equal to negative 16. Or it could be what? Greater than negative 16. So the answers that satisfy that are from negative 16 to infinity. You with me? All right. Let's continue on, guys. So here we go. All right. Now, again, we're going to try to review some of the techniques. So first thing I want to do is to do what? No. Add 7. Now, can you distribute? Yes, but I'm trying to make you smarter. All right, so we're going to add 7. So now I'm going to be 5 parentheses, K plus 8 is less than or equal to what? 30. Now I could distribute or I could do what? Make it real easy. Divide by 5. Why can I divide by 5? Because 30 is divisible by what? 30 is divisible by 5. So K plus 8 is less than or equal to what? 6. So k is less than or equal to negative 2. Now, if you distributed the 5 and then combined terms and then added and then divided, would you get the same answer? Yeah, 100% yeah, you would get the same answer. All right, but this is just efficiency. I want you to see. Quickly, good for you. 6 minus 8. 6 minus 8, right? Because I'm moving the 8 from the left. To the right. Go ahead. I'm isolating. Good question. All right. So now we're going to graph it. 
All right, so if I'm going to ask you to graph, here is 2, here is negative 2, less than or equal to is a solid dot going to the left. That would be the graph. Oh, hold on. Thank you. It's negative 2. You're right, you're right. Hello. There you go. Simple as that. Now what? Because it's equal to. Less than or equal to is a solid dot. If it was just less than, it would be an open. Less than. Where are the smaller? Where are the smaller numbers? Going to the left is getting smaller. Going to the right is getting what? Bigger. Can you show us the example of the open circle on the other side? That's because there's no equal to sign underneath it. Come on, come on, what? Because oh, um, one is greater than oh. and one is less okay. than. Good morning, sunshine. All right, anybody else? So we're good with one and two. Go ahead. All right, now what we're doing is we're recreating the number line in a shortened format. That's what interval notation is. You always read numbers from left to right. So in this case, we're starting out at negative infinity. All right? So we're at negative infinity, and we're going all the way to what? Negative 2. And then it's a hard bracket. Now, if you reverse the order, is it technically wrong? No, it's not really wrong. You're just not listening to me. You list numbers from small to large. That's what you're doing. You're listing numbers from small to large. Mr. Drinker, you on that? You got it? Yes, sir. I'm just confused on like where you use a hard bracket. Hard bracket is this. I'm gonna write it one more time. Hard bracket is any time you have an equal to. That's gonna be the hard bracket. So anytime it's equal to if it's this, oh, it's gonna be this. Okay. That's the but difference. Then how come it was like in the beginning it was just upper and no, I made two examples. I mean, on the one we did, it's like for infinity. Well, because, listen to me, negative infinity, that's a good question. Negative infinity is always a parenthesis. Parentheses, is all, I mean, infinity is always going to be a parenthesis. Right. right? The number has either got a parenthesis or a bracket. Right. Awesome. Why is it negative? Why is it negative? I don't know, how do you read numbers? All of these numbers. Right, so you're starting over here, which is what? And over here is positive infinity. So I'm going from negative infinity to negative two. That's how I should have done. It. Yes. So how come in the second answer the arrow goes up and then it goes down? Less than, because it's less than. Isn't that less than symbol? So that's why it's going left. Good. The reason it's on the right is because the bracket is always going to be around the number. Okay. Never infinity. The bracket will never be at infinity because you can't ever get to infinity. Infinity is not a number. It's an idea. Okay. All right. So here we go. All right. So now let's practice on number three real quick. What am I doing? So everybody's going to be... <clears throat> writing negative 2b is greater than negative 10. Do you understand that? And then what am I doing? Uh, dividing by two. negative 2. Now, <clears throat> here is the only rule. And listen to me, please. Whenever you multiply or divide by negative, you have to change the signs, correct? Mm -hmm. That means the inequality sign as well. So I'm going to show you why. All right, I'm going to show you why. But here's the answer. B is less than 5. B is less than 5. Now, I'm going to show you why real quick, because I used to ask my teachers, like, did they really just somebody make that up just to, you know, I mean, why, why, why would anybody do that? Right? And I'm going to show you why, so please look up. All right? Do you agree that 2 is greater than negative 1? Yes. If I multiply by 5, 10 is greater than negative 5. Do you agree that's still true? Yes. So multiplying by a positive didn't do anything. Now I'm going to multiply by negative 2. If I multiply by negative 2, I get negative 20 is greater than 10. 
Is that true? No. no, it is not. You see what I'm saying, guys? They're not just making up rules to make it hard. Right? So when you multiply, listen to me, or divide by a negative, you change all the signs. You have to write that rule. Multiplying or dividing by a negative, you change all the signs. All right? So in this case, all right, interval notation. If I'm less than five, all right, here's what I want you to think of. Visualize it like this. All right, it's on a number line. Here we go. I say negative five and five. Open circle at five, going to the left. Is everybody happy with that? Mm -hmm. That's the graph. Anybody have any questions with the graph? It doesn't go ahead, come on. Going to the right. Doesn't it say B is less than five? Yeah, oh, so if it's less than, then it always goes to the left. Yes. Oh. Greater than always goes where? Because think about that on the number line. That's why I put negative 5 and 5. If I go to the left, I'm getting smaller. If I'm going to the right, I'm getting what? Larger. You good? Yeah. All right. Now, we're going to do an interval notation. So to do an interval, to an interval notation, I'm starting at what value? Negative infinity. Beautiful. And I'm going to what? 5. Very nice. And they would both be in parentheses. All right. Now, boys, don't sit there and not understand something. What? Why isn't it a hard bracket after 5? Because it's not equal to 5. All right. All right. Very good. So let me just show you this. There's no equal to sign underneath that. So it has to be a parentheses. Quick. There's always going to be a dot. Always. Of that always parentheses on infinity. Michael, what? Um, Come on, learn to speak up now. What? You, you got it? All right. Mary Ellen, you good? Yeah. I just don't know how to, like, it's good. so you get the five and then... Do you put that on the right side every time? Well, it's just on a number line. Five would be to the right, and negative five would be to the left. Okay, and then, yeah, so you, that's right. So you just put negative infinity going. To the left, that's right. And to the left is negative infinity, to the right is positive infinity. So if I wanted to, if this might help you, I could put negative infinity over here, and infinity would be here. So I'm going from where? From negative infinity. All the way to what? Five. That's what this means right here. I'm trying to get you a visual on it. To me, I, I, I just see that as a number line. That's why I'm not understanding why some people have trouble. Because this right here, hear me, is an abbreviated what? Number line. That's all it is. I don't want to draw a number line. That's childish to me. I don't like drawing lines and putting circles in. You know, that's, that's dumb. This is important. That's how you talk math. You don't talk math with number lines. The number line is a visual effect for those of you guys who need it. If I say anything less than 5, you should say it's from negative infinity to 5. That's the answer. All right? So here we go with number 4, please. So I'm going to do what first? Subtract 15. So I end up with 3x is less than or equal to. So x is? Less than or equal to 2. X is less than or equal to 2. So now, I'm not expecting you right now. I just think it's easier to draw quickly a number line until you get used to it. If I'm less than or equal to 2, it's a solid dot going to the left. Do I have any issues with that? So the solid dot, if it's, if it's less than Equal to. If it's equal to, it's a solid dot. Come on. Okay, right? What? Good, good, good. Less than. True? If I'm less than two. Oh, okay. So and again, I'm going to keep saying that. I'm not trying to be rude. I'm simply saying I'm trying to highlight in your brain what's less than two. Am I going to the left or am I going to the right? I'm going to the left. It's all logic to me. That's why I never understood why people don't know this. You're less than or greater than. 
right? Less than is to the left, greater than is to the right. All right, now once you figure that out now, you can do interval notation because let me write this in over here because I think that was helpful to some kids. Negative infinity is to the left, right? So we write numbers from left to right. So this is negative infinity to what? To bracket. Here we go. Yes, sir. So how did infinity divide? Did I divide by a negative? No. No. Good question. The only time you switch the signs is you multiply and divide by a negative. Good. All right, here we go. Let's check out number five. What do I have to do on number five? Add one. So I have D over 2 is greater than or equal to 4, right? Now how do I undo division? So I multiply both sides by 2, so greater than or equal to 8. D is greater than or equal to 8. Everybody good with that? Come on. When you multiply or divide by a negative, you change the sign. Multiply or divide by a negative, you change the sign. All right? So now think about it on the number line real quick. Negative 8 and 8 greater than or equal to solid dot going to the right. Anybody have any questions or concerns? Now what? I'm starting at what number? 8 and I'm heading out to infinity. That's the answer that I want you to be able to say. It's really not hard. Really not that bad. Good, James. Come on. How come we can't where we haven't gone to well, because I was just describing, this was another example. That problem is just a completely different example. I just made something up to show people. You with me? Okay. All right, here we go. Um, I want to talk about number seven real quick. So everybody jump to seven. All right. Because we get out of here in a minute, don't we? All right, so number seven. Negative T over five is greater than what negative 11 right negative 2 over 5 is greater than negative 11 now i'm multiplying by what nope i'm multiplying by negative 5 stay with me negative 5 so t is less than 55 is everybody hearing me t is less than 55 all right so if i'm less than 55 I'm going from negative infinity to 55, all right? Now, you guys, listen, try to do uh, 3 through 14. And then tomorrow we're going to finish both pages, all right? But we'll have more time to knock this out tomorrow, all right? Good job for today, guys. If you're having trouble, you missed something, listen to the video.